Let's try and make your plant journey a little bit easier, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose and in this video we're going to talk about simple tips to make your plant caring journey, your plant parent journey, a little bit easier. This one is especially aimed at beginners, but there might be some tips for everyone in this so i hope you like it and it is useful for you and if you don't mind please give this video a thumbs up as you're starting to watch that's really helpful for me this video is sponsored by pokon which i will tell you a little bit more about later in the video but most important for you to know right now is that i used their products way before i contacted them to work together so first of all let's talk soil you may have seen my video where i talk about my soil mix which includes a lot of different ingredients and I can imagine that not everyone wants to have all those ingredients in the house and mix them up together themselves. So the first tip is to just get this potting mix. It is this big bag behind me. It's the organic potting mix from Pokon. And I really like it because it is quite chunky naturally. And they do that by using not only peat, but also wood fibers. And actually some bark bits in there. And the thing I like most, which I talk about in my other video, is the rice hulls or rice husks, the covers of rice, which is normally a waste product, but instead they are using it here to create more chunkiness, more air in the mixture. So in general, this is already quite a nice mix. I do like to add in bark and especially their excellent bark, which the bag behind me here says. It is really nicely formed bark, much different than some other brands that I've seen and tried. I got splinters everywhere. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. The pieces were much too big or too like awkward to work with. I used to have a lot of orchids and this was the stuff I used, purely this bark. But for a simple mix, you can add a little bit more bark in for big aeroids like Monstera or Philodendron. And then you're generally good to go already. If you don't like to mix yourself, because that still means you have to have two bags, you can actually also buy orchid mix which I have here, these little bags, they are basically their soil mix combined with bark. Let me pop that up here for a moment. So this basically consists of peat and bark. And it's quite nice. I, for my orchids personally, didn't use this because I wanted it to be much more chunky. I use pure bark. For most of your aeroids and hoyas, this could work very well. And then lastly, they also have a cactus mix, which I'll show you the bag is similar to the orchid mix only it has some sand in there as well which you can easily see and then wood fibers as well just like the big bag of soil so that could also be a good mix that is just ready to go you don't have to do anything with it of course again i'm filming this on a day where i just cleaned the whole house well with the help of my boyfriend. And now I'm mixing soils on my table. Not a good, good idea. Actually, that might be a good tip as well. There are these folding thingies. I don't know where to get them. I don't have one yet, but you can open it up basically like a bit of tarp, zell, and do your repotting on that and then close the tarp and move the excess soil and dead roots and stuff in the bin without creating a whole big mess in your house. I didn't plan to share that, but there you go. The second thing that we think about a lot and which I'm making more videos about separately from this one is pests. Obviously that is one of the most annoying things to have as a houseplant owner. And there are different ways to treat, which I talk about a little bit in this video. This is about identifying pests. Most important to know is that you can either do it the organic way, which I'm trying right now with just for example, neem oil and spraying your plant with water or something to remove pests and then maybe using beneficial insects, which I'm experimenting with. But that all is quite a lot of hassle. One thing that you can use that is natural and quite easy is these things. These are little capsules with, well, basically it smells like Italian food. <laughs> so I guess there's lots of garlic and onion things in there. You put this in the soil of the plant, you make a little hole, you drop the thing in and then you close it, you pour some water in and that will slowly start to dissolve the capsule into the soil. The roots will take up the stuff that is inside and the plant will start to be not so tasty for bugs. 
That's how these thingies work. So it's basically a natural systemic. And systemic is a treatment that doesn't mean you spray onto the plant once, onto the bugs once, but it goes inside the plant and it stays there for a longer period of time. I love using these things. They smell really nice. I don't know if they actually work or not. I haven't experimented with it long enough to know whether they work or not, but I have been using them for a while in a different package. Of course, this is a new package I got from Pokon to show you. And then the maybe more efficient way to treating pests, but not natural, is using sprays. Especially because the spray that you use doesn't only kill the bad bugs, it can also kill the good bugs, which I paid a lot of money for it. But also, if your plant goes outside, it can kill pollinators, bees, and whatever else our nature desperately needs to live, to feed us and everything. So I'm really careful with treatments now, and I would advise you to also be. But they have this, which says a spray against stubborn insects. And although this spray contains effective chemicals, it is actually organic which is kind of cool. Polysect spray, and it works for different kinds of bugs. This kind of spray, always make sure to read the labels very carefully. I didn't do that previously, and I used this spray like every three days on a plant and basically almost killed my poor syngoniums. Because actually, when you open this thing up, it says the treatment, it actually says you can use it maximum twice a year with seven days apart. So. I definitely overuse it. So if you do use a spray like this, it is very effective for killing bugs, but you have to be careful because it might kill bugs that you don't want to kill. The last thing I want to talk about, which is actually something that scared me as a beginner plant parent, is fertilizer. I didn't really know what was needed and I heard stories about burning the roots if you use too much, so I basically didn't feed. Let me tell you, it is definitely better to just feed regularly than to not feed at all because plants need certain macronutrients <laughs> macronutrients to grow. Hey. If you've watched my videos before, you may know that I really love this other brand that is a different kind of fertilizer, but I do have to say it is a little bit more complicated to use. It starts to smell really bad if you don't use it immediately. And so a really good tip for beginners or for people who want to keep it simple is to use a fertilizer like these two. So this is the organic one, which obviously I would prefer over the normal one because I like everything organic. If you use something like this, you basically don't need to know anything about the NPK or how to work it because it's very simple. So the main nutrients that are in fertilizers are NPK which you will always be able to find at the back of a bottle. It will say three numbers with the NPK. And N stands for nitrogen, which can help to grow the leaves. By the way, you don't have to remember any of this, but it might be fun to know. The P stands for phosphorus, which helps to grow both roots for smaller plants and flowers and fruits on mature plants. And then the K is for potassium or kalium in Dutch, which makes more sense with the K. And that generally helps the plant to take up water to be strong and to grow better. So the good thing about this is you do not need to know any of this if you're using a pre-mixed one that is good for the plants that you're using. So they have these general ones for house plants. They also have, these are my own old collection. <laughs> these are for green plants. It's not about the flowers, but it's about the foliage. And then also this one, Orchid Feed, which is also from my old days. This is a very old bottle. Obviously your orchids you would want to bloom, so it might have a little bit of a different NPK ratio compared to the other ones which are more focused on foliage. I've heard a lot of Hoya people say that they use this for their Hoyas. So that might be interesting because obviously your Hoya you might want to also bloom. Might be better to use this than one of the more general ones or the one for foliage plants. This says one quarter cup per liter. And you can always use the top, the lid, as a measuring cup for that. So you can check how many liters go into your heater, your watering can, and then you can measure out how much of the stuff you need. If you're afraid to burn roots, that usually happens more with the non-organic fertilizers because there is a lot of salt in there, which can accumulate on the roots if the soil isn't changed enough or rinsed through enough, or if you use too much of it. So check the bottle, make sure that you use the recommended amount, 
or a little bit less if you're starting and you don't know how often you should use it. That lessens your chances of burning the roots, but it also can lessen the chance of it helping your plant grow. So you have to find a balance in that. And a good thing to know for fertilization is that you usually do it from spring until fall. And Pocon specifically recommends doing it until November and then stopping until spring, until you see your plants starting to grow again. Main point, don't be afraid of fertilizers and just try it. And if you're actually still thinking this is a lot of work or a lot of hassle, they have this other thing, which is even more easy. These little blobs, <laughs> they look like little candies. Don't eat them. But these you can pop into your pot and this will work for up to six months. So that is even easier. So if you're still confused about the measuring and all that stuff, try these. I haven't tried them myself because I use a very extensive fertilizing system, but this sounds like a very, very easy way to start fertilizing your plants. And that's basically it for this tips video. I would love to hear in the comments below which tip you didn't know yet and you're gonna try out. A big thank you to Pocon for working with me and sponsoring this video. I've been using their products quite a while and I especially appreciate that they really value sustainability. So they are searching for new solutions to make their soil more sustainable, to create more easy products for you guys, and to also improve their organic product lines. So I really, really like the way they run their business and I'm excited to work with them. They are a Dutch brand, so you'll have to see wherever you live if you can find their products or maybe you can find another local company that has the same kind of values and the same kind of products, which are easy to use and just practical. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. That would be awesome. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. I also have a Patreon and a YouTube membership, which you can find more information about below. I want to say hi and thank you so much to my new Patreons, Saskia, Lisa, H and Ivana. I love that you guys chose to join me. I can't wait to talk to you guys in the monthly Zoom call and chat with you on the Discord. So if you're interested in that, check the information below or check this video where I explain all the perks a little bit more extensively. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye friends. Answer. <laughs> Let's kijken. Met je poepetje uit het beeld en dan hier kijken.